Hi, so welcome back to the result and debrief. So you've just watched Sophie's um, ADI part three mock test. Um, and now we're gonna go through the result and give some explanation debrief as to why I've scored it the way I did. So I used the ADI part three marking sheet, which I'll put a copy on the screen now so you can have a look. So the result is, unfortunately, this was not a pass um, on this occasion. I scored it at 21 points out of the possible 51 points. Um, so not enough to hit that 31 points for pass mark. Um, the breakdown lesson planning, I gave that four. Risk management, six. And teaching and learning strategies at 21. So, let's, in brief, let's just give you a quick run through why I feel that wasn't good enough to pass on this occasion. I just didn't feel that the lesson met the needs of the pupil. So there were many faults going on that weren't being picked up and addressed. So the lesson's not being adapted to meet the needs of the pupil. So that's why the lesson planning is scored low on this test. Um, I felt it wasn't a client-centered lesson, it was more instructor-led as to about what was gonna be happening. Um, so it needs, it needs to be more focused on the pupils' needs and what, and what they wanna get out of this, this lesson. Uh, directions at times were missing, late, unclear, so I thought there's an area for improvement there. And in places I thought uh, the lesson was just over-instructed. So let's go through and break that down and so I just want to share with you my thoughts as I watched the video I made notes and I'm going to go through my notes now and share them with you so let's have a look so first thing to mention just the car so we've got a child seat in there when taking an ADOA part three I would remove that seat um, just to allow the people to have good visibility in the back and just remove any bottles. There, there was a bottle uh, that looked like it was down on the floor. So we just wanna make sure there's no, no things that can roll under the seat and just make sure the car's nice and tidy. Now, except Sophie's a working mum and that's fine while she's teaching to have that. But just thinking in preparation for part three, we wanna get that removed. So let's talk about the recap. So during the recap, the, Sophie talked to the, the people and there was a problem um, around lane discipline that happened last week and that the people takes private practice. Um, now the reason was explored, I guess it was explored before the lesson because they'd already it, it struck me that they'd already had this conversation that the reason for the poor lane discipline was due to the mirrors um, being overlooked in. So, um, and cut, cut this bit, let's just go back into that recap. So we just done the car, see, removed. Okay, so if we look at the recap, Previous week, there'd been a problem with uh, the pupil keeping in their lanes on roundabouts. Okay, so that was looked at and explored. And the reason was that the, uh, the pupil was just looking in their mirrors too much. Um, and now the pupil had practiced that before this lesson had started. So before the video we watched, they had had a practice at doing this. And I got from that conversation that it was sorted, that they'd managed to sort this little problem out. So at this point I'm thinking, well, what do we really need to go and do this again? Fine if that's just having a little warm up, just to make sure, but what was gonna happen after that? What was gonna be the main goal of the lesson? So moving on to the goal, so, um, so okay, so we're gonna look at, it was agreed that they're gonna look at lane um, discipline and then move on to something else. What was the something else? What was the main theme of this lesson going to be? Because like I say, the lane discipline, I thought had already been addressed before this lesson started. So what was gonna be the main meat of this lesson? What was the people gonna achieve out of this lesson? So that were my thoughts. Is I'm thinking from the start, what is this lesson about? What are we gonna achieve out of it? Um, 
I would have liked the PDI to ask the pupil about what they would have liked to achieve. So talk to the PDI. We want to make it client-centered. Talk to the pupil. How do they feel? What do they want to get out of it? Um, so yeah, so that was my main thoughts on the recap and the goal. I think it needs to be much firmer about what what needs to be happening on this lesson. So some smart goals and let, you know, and not too many. One, two, maybe three goals to to address during this lesson. So okay, let's, let's talk about the moving off. So they moved off from the car park. I just thought there was a bit of over instruction here. Um, the, the instructor jumped in and started to talk about um, just make sure you do your safety checks we're in a car park. Now, people at this stage, I would be asking them, like, where are you going to look? Why? What are the risks? Rather than just over instructing and sort of telling them, reminding them that they needed to look, ask rather than tell would be the approach there. So I just felt like just from the, that opening little moving off, over instructed. Next, the um, there was an issue um, that I picked up on clearance. So look at that car park, they're going through the exit, there's one parked car in front, and the pupil decided to drive through the bay very close to that parked car. Was that the best choice? Was that the safest choice for that pupil to do? I thought that was worth talking about. Either proactively before, like how are you going to get to the exit, what is your plan, um, what would be the safest option possibly, or if they were going to do what they did, say well hang on a minute, what about the clearance on this car, what would be a safer way to do it. So I just felt there was a missed opportunity to talk about that clearance, which just seemed unnecessary and just too close to, to pass that car. So, um, so that was my thoughts just as they were, they were going out the car park. Next, I want to talk about the undertake scenario. So the people looked like they wanted to undertake that car on that, that little bit of dual carriageway. So I just thought this again was a little bit of over instruction that the instructor was telling the people what to do. Instead, I would be asking questions. For example, I would ask my people, what can you anticipate this car doing? Will they see us? Because the instructor pointed out we were sitting in the blind spot. But rather than tell, ask. I mean, yes, there's a time to be directive um, if danger is imminent. But I thought there was a good opportunity just to ask these questions. To sort of say, you know, what do you think that car might do? Do you think he can see us? What would be the best option? What should we do? And sort of prompt more than tell in that situation. Now, while that was going on, no direction was given for the next roundabout. So we're, we're heading towards that roundabout in the left lane. But does the people at this point know where they're going? So it's, it's vital that you get that direction in nice and early. So I would have been saying, OK, the next roundabout, I'd like you to go ahead. Then start your line of questions. So what do we think about this car here? What do you think he might do? You know, and, and follow that line of questions. So that's what I mean about the over instruction and a, a, a very late direction because the people at that point didn't know where they're going. And how can the people plan for that next roundabout if they don't know where they're going? Yeah, you know, we have to give the people opportunity to plan and take responsibility, don't we? So if they don't know where they're going, how can they do that? Okay, next I want to talk about the weird roundabout. Let's just call it the weird roundabout because that's how the people describe it. So hopefully you know the roundabout I'm talking about. So um, let's talk about directions again. We're going straight ahead. So quite often the, the, throughout this lesson, the directions were not given in the ADI method. They weren't alerting, directing and identifying. They were kind of using their own style of giving directions which we really want to be using ADI. Um, so we, you know, we're going straight ahead at this roundabout. Really, it should be at the roundabout ahead. Second exit, if you want the identifier on there. OK, so directions could be clearer given in the ADI method. Um, the direction was given in good time before the sign, which was good. But I would encourage the people to look at that sign 
so they can plan where their exit was. Because it was a little bit of a weird round. About the ahead was slight left, more at 11 o'clock. So if we're given the direction in good time, which it was, say look to the people, look at the sign, we're going ahead. It's the second exit, all other routes. Now, if they've had a chance to look at that sign, they can think in their mind where they're going to be going. And maybe they wouldn't have said that was a weird roundabout. I mean, was that ever explored why that was a weird roundabout? What made it weird? What was in the people's head? We just never found out. So sticking with the weird, the weird roundabout, the approach speed was too fast. This resulted in the people straying out of their lane, which is what the theme of the lesson was going to be about, wasn't it? Wandering out a lesson. If we'd explored the cause, now the cause was given as over checking the mirrors, but from what I watched there, I felt they were too fast and went out of their lane. If they were slower, I think they would have had much more control on the steering and could have stayed in lane. It was too fast. Was this fault, mistake, used as an opportunity to, to train that pupil. No, it wasn't. It wasn't identified, so then we can't go through the process of um, getting the pupil to self-evaluate and, and fixing that fault. Okay, so that, that's dealt with the, the weird roundabout. Um, then we had the slip road roundabout, the one after it. Um, no direction given. Um, just we're now get, what was said we're now going to change lanes well why if we give the people the direction then they can they would know that wouldn't they if they're in a right lane and they're going to turn left at the next roundabout surely that the people at this stage would know that they need to use the left hand lane so i again i just felt this was a late direction over instruction on the part of the instructor um Yeah, so that, that was that roundabout. Also in amongst this was the people was not aware of the speed limits. So they were either going too slow and not making enough progress, or they were going too fast and exceeding speed limit. These, this was kind of dabbled into. It needed to be much stronger on this. We need to, the people needs a clear way of identifying what the speed limit is. So we need to get to the street lights. Are there, if there's a system of street lights, the speed limit is 30 unless signs are posted otherwise. Okay, so it needs to be nice and clear. And then why not encourage the people as an opportunity on this lesson to start looking for these signs? So we're gonna go into a new road. So what's the, the speed limit in the new road gonna be? Okay, there is a system of street light. Are there any repeater signs on this road? So I just thought this pupil is constantly not really confident of what the speed limit is. This is a need, this is an opportunity. Was it addressed throughout this lesson? No, no it wasn't. Okay, so next note I made was there was time wasted. So we talked about the weird roundabout and we were gonna go back and do that. Okay, now the most direct route wasn't taken to get back to this roundabout. They did another little circuit of another block of roundabouts which wasn't the most direct route. And I just thought, well, we, I thought we were going back to the other roundabout, let's, the weird roundabout, let's just get there, let's get on with it. And en route to that, discuss what made it weird and what are we gonna achieve by doing it again? What was the goal of going back to that roundabout? We don't know what made it weird. What was the problem with it? What did the people want to get out of that roundabout? It was never very clear to me why they were going back there. I think they needed to go back there because the question was raised by the people. But we need to agree what we're trying to achieve and what level of instruction the, the, the instructor is going to give the people to help them achieve what they wanted to achieve and understand, to gain more understanding from that roundabout. So um, let me just look at my notes, make sure I'm not missing anything here. So just... Yeah, okay, so let's, that's the, the weird roundabout. Thing with. So 
So now we're about 14 minutes into the lesson. They've just revisited the weird roundabout. Okay. And then there's a change of plan. And the PDI said, okay, what we'll do is head off and do some other roundabouts. Okay, so now the, the lesson plan is being changed. Was, was this agreed with the people? What were the other things? It was not very specific. Um, what are we going to do now? It just seemed, so I just thought at this point, the, the, the lesson's lost its direction. What are we going to achieve? What needs to be done? What I would have been saying at this point is, okay, let's work on these mirrors. Let's get the speed awareness sorted out. And, you know, and, and we could have been filling that time um, when going off to, to change the route and the plan. But the people didn't know what the plan was, what, why it was being changed. It was instructor-led. The instructor decided the plan was going to change. But to what? Don't know. Okay. Directions, I've got a note here, so back, you know, so directions is a theme throughout this lesson that they need to be worked on. Um, so the direction was, in a minute, we're going to need the right hand lane. So at the next roundabout, they're gonna be turning right. This needs to be given as, an, as an, a direction. So the instructor should be saying, okay, pupil, at the next roundabout, I'd like you to turn right and then discuss if they need any help with it or any prompting. Like, so what lane would you pick? So the instructor's going in straight with a like, in a minute, we're going to be turning right and instructed them um, to check their mirrors, to put a signal on, speed up and change lane. So this is just over instruction. We'd already seen the people turn right at, I don't know, three or four roundabouts, granted single lane roundabouts, this one had two lanes on approach. Did, you know, did the people need that level of instruction to deal with that roundabout? I'm not so sure, I'm pr I feel pretty confident that that people could have, with good advance warning of where they're gonna go, could have thought, right, yeah, I know I, what I need to do. If they couldn't, then this could be the theme of the lesson, to sort of say, we're gonna help you turn right on busy roundabouts with multiple lanes and then learning would take place. So I just didn't understand why the instructor was jumping in, telling them to be in the right lane without first letting them know where they're at least going. Okay, so um, let's talk about snake roundabout. So snake roundabout is the roundabout with the solid lane marking, the solid hatched area, the one that you can't cross. So. This roundabout, the pupil has attempted to go in that hatched area a couple of times. Was anything mentioned? There was a little bit of intervention, a little bit, oh, stay, out, stay on this side, keep it, you know, there was some direction coming. So I'm thinking, okay, so there, there's a need here. The pupil clearly would have gone through the solid hatched area. So this is an opportunity for learning to take place. It needs to be analyzed. Um, Remedial action, let's go back and have a look at that again and repeat. But it wasn't. They continued. So you think about the weird roundabout, there was some kind of need there to go back, some reason for going back, and they did, which is good to do that. It just needs to be clear of what they were going to achieve out of it. So now with the, the snake roundabout, the solid hatched areas, this time we're not going back. And I'm thinking, okay, but they, that was that would have been illegal to go through there, potentially dangerous. On a driving test, serious fault. So, you know, they're breaking the law. So there's a clearly a need for, for learning to take place for this pupil, but it was just, yeah, just brushed under the carpet, not addressed, move on. Um, let's talk about the traffic light and the stop position. So the pupil stopped quite short of the stop line. Why was this? Was it explored? So if I, if I was the instructor there, I would have been talking to the people about this, like, you know, where should we stop? Why have we stopped here? What's the reason behind it? Um, you know, because some lights, if you stop too short of them, they won't trigger because the sensors would be in the, in the grounds just before it to know what the, what the traffic's like there. So it, you, you could be there for a very long time. Um, 
there are things, opportunities missed to talk about. Okay, so next we were doing 20 and a 30. Um, so again, that, that problem's coming back, that pupil still doesn't know how to tell what the speed limit is, that they, they don't feel very confident at it. And so, yeah, quite rightly, the instructors picked it up, instructed the pupil to speed up, no mirrors checked. So we're speeding up, no mirrors. And you're probably thinking, okay, now I've mentioned mirrors. There was an issue with mirrors throughout this lesson, wasn't there? Mirrors are being missed throughout. So one thing I did do, which I probably should have mentioned earlier, is when I watch a, a mock test or a video, I thought I kind of think, what is the pupil doing? And I fill out a DL25. And I'll put this on the screen so you can see that in terms of what are their faults, what are their needs, and then I'd fill out one of these to think how is the instructor dealing with that. And so I kind of like, that's how I, my little mind works. I think, how is the pupil doing? How, what are the opportunities there in terms of faults, mistakes, learning opportunities, and then how is the instructor coping with it and mark a, uh, a part three marking sheet. So you will notice on the uh, DL25, there are lots of opportunities around mirrors, changing speed, direction, and um, before signaling. And yes, the instructor's been talking about this, but so let's crack onto this, let's get it done. Let's have a structured approach to dealing with these mirrors and say, right, okay, change plan, that we are gonna work on your mirror, or agree to work on your mirrors, and, and be proactive with it agree at the level of instruction, agree, oh, am I going to prompt you or are we going to leave you to do this one? You know, so by the end of this lesson, we want to get mirrors sorted out. So these are things going through my mind, thinking, come on, just get ahead of the pupil, talk about the change of speed limit in this road, talk about what mirrors you're going to check before you change speed, before you put that signal on. And then we would have been much more on this lesson than what it was. It just felt the instructor was always a step behind the learner. Um, so yeah, so we talked about that. So then they pulled up, had a little chat. Um, so at this point I'm thinking, right, this pull up, this is gonna make or break this lesson. There needs to be a change plan here and things need to get sorted. And it, at 20 minutes in, maybe there's a chance that this lesson could be redeemed and turn it back to a pass. So during the debrief, um, again, I just felt it was the instructor telling the pupil what they achieved rather than exploring it with the pupil and talking to the pupil about how they felt and getting them to self-analyze and them to come up with goals and, and be part of that learning process. So I felt it was very like instructor-led during that that part. Um, they talked about uh, uh, much better on, on the lanes, even though that one there wasn't, and there was a you know when they were going in, in a bit too fast. They didn't talk about the snake roundabout, the the attempt to cross the lines. They didn't talk about the the uh, the lack of awareness about speed limits or the poor use of mirrors. So had these things been talked about in that little debrief, that little pull up, then I, like I say, I think it could have been brought back. But instead the plan was to go back and do those roundabouts again and, and I just thought, okay, I don't think we're really, we're hitting the needs here. So when the wheels were moving again, once they pulled off, because that, the lesson wasn't being adapted to where it needed to be, I just thought at this point, this, this is, has a fa it's failed at that point. So 20 sort of four minutes in, once, once the wheels started moving, I thought, I don't really can't see this, this, this coming back. So, um, so yeah, so then they started going again. There were still, it was like signal their mirrors, that there were faults going around parked cars, mirrors like, yeah, yeah. The instructor really needs to keep an eye on the, the pupil, make sure they're doing it and be proactive. We already know it's a problem, so let's, let's get in front of them. And so then the last thing I just want to talk about, 26 minutes in, the pedestrian at the T-junction, the two pedestrians, how did we feel about that? Okay, so 
awareness and anticipation needs to be in play here. This great opportunity for the pupil to learn. Now, two pedestrians, the first one goes, guess what the second one's going to do? Yes, of course, and, and the second one gets in the road and crosses. The instructor said stop. Did the car stop? No. The car kept moving towards that girl. Should have been on the brake, stop that car dead. It was unacceptable to allow that car to keep moving forwards towards that pedestrian. And then, you know, intervention was needed, it was safety critical, but then the, the PDRA is excusing the pupil and sort of putting the blame onto the, uh, the pedestrian for doing that. Well, hang on a minute, they're vulnerable road users in the road. Yeah, it was just the wrong way around. So there was a clear learning opportunity. It was safety critical. It needed to be talked about, it wasn't. And at that point, I've, I've stopped making notes because at that point, I just felt the lesson could not be redeemed. So, and the same things just sort of happens throughout. So, um, so that would con con conclude my debrief. Quite a lengthy one, quite a lot of areas to work on for the PDI, which we will be spending time with this PDI to help them with this. I think a quick, quick, simple fix would be to get these directions given clear and in good time to give the people more chance and work on this level of instruction. To have a clear goal, have something specific in mind, like mirrors, and then be proactive on working on those mirrors or, or pick a goal like use of speed and speed awareness and be proactive and look at those and think, right, let's, as a process, work through that and get this fixed. Let's take it and fix it, get it done. Um, and that, yeah, that's what we're gonna be working on in the future. So that concludes my result debrief. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video.